Welcome everyone to the August CVCRM Camp Bar Chat. Today we're going to be talking about memberships. Um, I'm going to hand it over to Jenna to introduce herself and do a quick demo. Um, so Jenna. Thanks. It's great to be here. I'm Jenna Dillette from Square and I went ahead and put in the um, agenda that we have today at Square. We do ongoing hosting support, configuration, um, troubleshooting, custom development, all of that for nonprofits, membership associations, educational organizations. And so I'll be um, breaking up content today in sort of three topics, what I think of as membership 101, 201. And then because we work mostly with Drupal, and I know that there's already been a lot of Joomla discussion and questions, a lot of what I cover later in the topic will be about how you can extend CBCR membership functionality through Drupal specifically. And so for everybody else um, using WordPress, Joomla, make sure to take advantage of the chat feature, getting um, other folks contact information so you can follow up and, and troubleshoot and work through your specific use case. So what we're going to start off with membership 101 is really membership types and understanding what those types are. Um, so I'm just looking in a, I'll be demoing um, from the back end of Civi Serum for a while from a demo site that we have at Square. Um, it's a Drupal 9 and Civi Serum installation. And so for purposes of this demo, I've just created two, um, two membership types in the system. If I add another membership type, we can kind of walk through the anatomy. So you see that the name here is the uh, both the external and internal name of what that membership type is. And you can give that a description with any of these configuration windows within Civi CRM. Anytime you see an asterisk, that is a field that is required. You'll get an error message if you try to click save and you haven't actually selected an option in that. Um, membership organization, this is really, um, really valuable in the way that you set up your membership types when you have more than one membership. So there's some nice documentation on cvcrm.org about um, why membership organization matters. And the main thing is if you want to have um, individuals or organizations be able to have multiple concurrent memberships. So maybe they are a lifetime member and they're also um, a friend of the farm. Um, and one of those is an annual membership that um, can auto renew and the other is a lifetime membership and they have different perks and benefits because of that. That can easily be set up and configured and we have a, a test contribution page for membership signup that I'll show you, um, but only if the membership organization is different. Otherwise, what Civi CRM default behavior wants to do is if the membership organization is the same for every membership type, it's sort of a membership upsell where then upon membership renewal, then that membership type will just change from one membership um, to another membership. There's some other custom ways to, to handle that, but that's all developer and code related. And so from the UI, the ability for you to have members have multiple concurrent memberships that they can manage on their own is to make sure that for those different membership types, you set a different membership organization. So that membership organization would not just be um, kind of your, your organization name, the primary contact um, most likely within, within Civi CRM. Um, so that's critical. And we can see if I just go here for the purposes of this demo, I went ahead and even set up and see we have the American Membership Society as the membership organization for this lifetime membership. And for this annual friend membership type, we have Square as the membership organization. Um, and so we'll see an example of why this matters and how um, then signups look on a contact record. Let's go back to adding a membership type to point out a few other things. You can see membership fee is not required, uh, but if you set this, then that's the value that will automatically be pulled in when you add that membership type into, um, into Civi CRM in a contribution page. You see the financial type is selected. This could be a whole other chat about um, getting more out of account, accounting integration and management from Civi CRM. Um, within the system, you can set up an unlimited number of financial types Financial types are, are created from um, multiple financial accounts. All of those accounts and account codes can directly match what your accounting system expects. And then all of the, the batching and bookkeeping reports that can be run out of Civi CRM can allow for kind of any level of integration that you would want. Uh, I know we've worked with some organizations who have uh, a sync in place with QuickBooks Online, for example. Um, so then there's kind of that one-to-one -one match always. 
And so any financial type you want, that is required. Um, if you know a little bit about Civi CRM price sets, you can know that when you build out a price set for the purpose of memberships, then you can always change and have a specific financial type related to one membership that's different than an, another membership that may be included in your price set. This next section is about if there's an auto renew option, if this membership should never have an auto renew option, if it's optional but not required, or if the auto renew is required. The next you specify kind of the, the type, the duration of your membership, whether that's it lasts one day or one month or a year or one lifetime or three years or six months. And so this would be a numeric field, put in whatever number makes sense and then um, selecting the unit that's relevant. Um, next is the membership type plan. So rolling versus fixed. So today is August 27th. If this membership type was rolling and I signed up today, then my since and start date would be um, August 27th, 2021. And my, if it was a one year membership, then my expiration would then be August 26th, 2022. If it was fixed, then I could say the fixed period here of does it end then automatically you see that it's starting on a calendar basis, but you can update this as you'd like. And I'm wondering if this is, um, I'm not remembering that this was always part of the configuration screen. So I'm, I'm thinking that it could have been years at this point <laughs> that this has been added functionality to Civi CRM. This is nice controls and doesn't just assume a calendar year. Next, and I heard a, a few questions about it already is membership types and or relationship types. Um, and what this does is allow you to automatically then grant a membership by relationship to other contacts based on the relationship that they have with the primary member organization. So maybe employee of and volunteer for maybe a few membership or a few relationship types will then automatically get this membership. This can be really valuable if with access control on your website, for example. So um, uh, if you... Um, want to only give members when they log in access to certain types of information, then that can be granted based on their membership status. So for example, if they have a current or new membership, maybe they should get to see the member only area. If their membership has expired, then, um, then they shouldn't get to see that. And that can all be inherited based on the relationship that contacts have with the primary member. You can see this, it's not required, but if there's a max related, a maximum number of related memberships um, that can, can inherit that membership. And there's a question about if it's initially um, pro rates for a partial year, and it doesn't. And I think that there's a few other ways um, that that can be handled, but not through, not through this screen. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and look at um, a contribution form just to see see the configuration for this. So I'm going to go to contributions, manage contribution pages, and I have a, I have a just a demo form set up for this purpose. So you know that you use contribution forms, whether that's a donation that you're collecting or membership sign up as well, because you have that membership tab. So within this first area, you specify the title of your page, if it's different with a public title, you specify the financial type here, but as you'll see in a price set, when we look at that, um, you specify the financial type that's relevant to every line item. If you have text, you've got full WYSIWYG editor as well as footer message and the way that that appears above and below the page. Your start date, if you have an end date that you want, whether or not you want to use a contribution page or a confirmation page to show, um, show people what it is that they're going to be paying for before they click submit. Let's look at this membership section. So I've enabled that. My title has become a member today. Just like we saw on the main screen, you can have additional introduction um, and renewal information because you use the same contribution form where you can for both the membership signup as well as the membership renewal. You see that you have a different option. So say renew your membership today instead of become a membership member today. And then in this case, I went ahead and set up a price set. And so let's look at price sets together. So for the purposes of this, 
And you see, I was playing around and I already have one that I disabled. I just have two. So let's preview what that looks like. Um, it's not showing all of them. That's interesting. We'll just have to look at the actual form. I have a um, become a member, which is a checkbox. And we can see that it's selecting from the lifetime membership or the annual friend. And that's a field type of checkbox and then make a donation as an additional one. And if I edit those price options, we can see that the donate the financial type for this is donation and I have different options. So let's go to our form and I'll go to contribution links here at the top and go to the live form. Okay, so like I mentioned, this is Drupal 9. Um, we're using just the Olivero theme. It's nice, um, responsive because of profile information. It's auto-populating my information because I'm logged in. We're also gonna look at checksum so you can see how to send um, links in your email that automatically do this without that user having to log in. So here you can see that I can sign up for both memberships. It's automatically going to 125 and I can also make an additional donation. And I'll go ahead and click review. And there we go, there's my total, that's what's due. I just have pay later enabled and I'll click continue. All right, success, mail your check. Now let's go to my contact record and see what that looks like. So we see we don't have any memberships enabled yet. Um, because they're pending, because I have a pending pay later contribution. So if I just edit this contribution quickly, you see it's broken down by line item, or I have two memberships that I've signed up for, and one donation that I've made for the total contribution. I'm going to change that from pending to completed and click save. And now, automatically, I have two memberships. One is a lifetime membership and one is an annual friend. And we can see that the lifetime does not have an end date because it's a lifetime membership and my annual friend does have an end date. And so that's how that's a kind of a use case for the way you can use price sets and being careful to select the organization type that is the owner of that membership to then allow for multiple concurrent memberships, which then open the doors wide in terms of what kind of um, access to content um, should be provided. Okay. So we've talked about that, we've talked about that. So let's look at scheduled reminders and then we'll take a pause and answer some questions because I'm seeing some things come into chat. So scheduled reminders, you can set those up by going to administer communications and scheduled reminders. And there's none set up right now, so let's add one. So we'll do a demo. And the first thing you do is you select what it should be based on. So first on the list is based on a contribution page. In the system right now, we just have two, a donate form and a become a member form. Maybe this is based on the become a member form being completed or being canceled or failed, whatever that status is for the submission of that contribution page. Um, noting that if you are in Drupal and you're setting up um, a form based on um, say a Drupal web form, that there'd be some different ways to manage it that I'm not going to try to cover in this training. Um, but this is specifically for if you're using from a contribution page perspective, if you're using um, the CiviCRM based contribution pages. So you could be based on the contribution page and then a certain number of hours, days, weeks, months, years, either before or after the receive date, cancel date, receipt date, or thank you date. And these are all automatic dates are, that are recorded within the system. Another valuable way to set up, and you see that you can do many more scheduled reminders than just for membership. You can also see activities, which could be a specific activity type and custom activity types that you create within CVCRM or a specific event type or name or a donation action because of a contribution type. Um, but for membership, you can see that it's then selecting from the membership types that are available in the system. So perhaps it's a membership that's the lifetime membership that is either happening on a certain calendar date that I want this to go out, or better yet, a certain number of weeks, say after the um, start date. And then I could 
say, I'm so happy you joined us three weeks ago. Have you checked out these great resources you now have access to? And so having that kind of um, intentionally timed communication that you set up once in the system and then is automatically going out to your user base based on when they are joining. And that's especially helpful because there's typically a lot of orientation information that you're wanting to give to your members as they sign up, but it's sometimes best not to overload them at the beginning, right? There's a lot of information you can share at the beginning of the membership sign up, but then intentionally pausing and say following up three weeks later or six months later, if you want them to take action. And because of the kind of the relative date and what that date is referenced against, then that can be very targeted and timely based on when that individual or organization has been engaging um, with your organization. So down below, you decide if that is repeated. Um, and even then again, the number of hours, days, weeks, either before or after starter end date or every so many hours. Um, so there's a lot of potential with how you can set up repetition for these scheduled reminders. You specify who it should be from um, by the name, what should that look like in their email inbox, as well as what should the email be from. You can also include, say, a specific group contact, so maybe contacts in your organization. You want the membership team to hear about that, and then you build the body of it, and you can set up an unlimited number of scheduled reminders. So I'm not sure if that was 10 minutes or not. I think it was over, so I'm going to pause for now and see what questions have come in and uh, Roshini, if you can even direct me to things that I should start with to answer on the topics we've covered so far. Sure, thank you so much. Um, I think one of the questions is, is the membership um, application form, I don't know if this is mentioned in the chat, but there's a question I had, can it be created without contributions? Let's say if your organization offers a free membership, Mm -hmm. Or do you always have to tie in membership with contributions? You don't always have to tie in membership with contributions. An example of that is the Network for the National Library of Medicine. Um, I'll be demoing their system and they, they could really have um, contributions turned off. Um, so that, that is not, um, that's not dependent. There does not have to be money exchanged in order for the sign up for a membership, just like an event, an event registration can happen for a free event. So would you create the membership form in web forms or would it be within memberships? Yep, would be within memberships in the way that, um, just to show that really quick. So we have our membership types. For the purposes of this, I had said that there was a minimum fee. If I had removed that, then you can see for free complimentary membership set it to zero. Got it. Um, Mm -hmm. But and you so, still have to yeah. use like a contribution form or you no, do you have just... to use. Yeah, you do use a contribution page still because that is really the form builder for setting up, um, setting up the membership sign up. But that doesn't mean there has to be um, contributions that actually go with it. Um, you can also I mean, from a Drupal perspective, there can also be setting it up with a web form. And we have a model for that that we'll go through in kind of section three of the training. And I thinking now it would have been great to have something like that set up as a demo of just showing a non um, a free membership sign up form and what that looks like. Great. And yeah. then Anna, <laughs> Not, no time Anna on the feel free to mute, unmute yourself to ask your question or we can ask your question as well. I think Anna had a question. And let's see. Yes, development. Um, it was um, yeah. kind, of, kind of building up off of Kathy's too around just access to that information. Um, out my particular case use is that, or use case is that we have administrators and we have mm -hmm. folks who may need access to some of the information um, that would be found through this, but because it's part of contributions, it seems like they have to also be admins. No, so that you could create separate permissions where perhaps they can't see contribution data at all. Maybe there's no money that they can see in the system, but they can see membership. So they could see the membership status. So that would be possible to have a different role in your system where they can see some components of a contact record, for example, um, where then someone's permission, instead of being able to see contributions and memberships, maybe they just get to see memberships. And under memberships, then when I view this, 
Below, I would see related contributions are reoccurring because we can see that that's basically what is making, because this is a paid membership, that's what's making this a uh, membership with a status that it has an active membership. And this would just be hidden from them if they did not have um, permissions to view contributions. So they wouldn't know that it was missing. It just wouldn't appear on the page. A lot of those permissions are handled on the um, CMS side of the system. So whether you're with WordPress, Joomla, or Drupal. Great, thank you. Let's go ahead and move on to the second part of the demo and then we can pause a little bit later for okay. more questions. So the next one was just a quick review of valuable extensions. And I'm actually just gonna throw these in because there's not, I'll go to this tab, valuable extensions. And as I mentioned, I'm demoing mostly from Drupal. Why it's not copying in there. And I see there's another question from Kathy about uh, can you have a free trial membership period followed up with automatic follow up after the trial period ends? Yeah, so I would see that as just on the fly configuration. I would set a the membership period to be whatever that free trial is, and then um, having a scheduled reminder that goes out um, either a day, a week after that membership end date. And there could be um, a follow-up inviting them to sign up for another membership um, or to take some other sort of action. And so that's where those scheduled reminders that we were looking at in the system that you can get to from communications, scheduled reminders, that's where that can be really valuable. Um, so it's based on that membership type and the membership end date, say one hour or one day after the membership end date, and then um, having the message and the links. And um, we'll also in this next section talk about tokens and how to use checksum and automated um, links to send out great communications. Okay. Anything else before I jump into some extensions that can be valuable? No, I think go ahead. Okay, all right. Um, so I just threw a few here. Please add to this for folks of, that use the system. There's some here below that we'll really be talking about more, um, which I'll even copy them down here when we get to Drupal um, and delete them from up here. So the three that I wanted to pull out and note is contact membership logging, which allows for you to see more details about every time that membership has changed. So that greater history, especially when um, there's either lots of team members who may be making change or you're wanting to track when the member themselves is making change. It just provides more detailed logging on the membership than what CVCRM by default provides. Um, the next one is membership extras, and there's links in here that you can review the documentation and information for what they do and um, the additional functionality they add. And the final is line item reporting that can be really valuable. So just like we saw on my contact record that I was looking at where I had within one contribution record, I had a donation and I had two membership fees and those were all, those all showed up as um, specific line items. So three line items on that contribution record, um, the way to do more specific reporting on that, because out of the box you set on that contribution page, you set what the general default um, financial type is, which in that case was member dues. Uh, but you can have any number of line items within one contribution um, that can all be set up with different financial accounts or financial types. And so the way that can be useful with your reporting and just accurate tracking of really what is a donation versus a membership or an event registration versus a membership or even a specific kind of membership um, and campaign that you're that you're looking at. So these are just three that stood out to me quickly um, to kind of get get folks started and adding more um, to what the system already makes available. So um, the next thing I wanted to show is kind of a, a unique use case for reviewing memberships. Um, and a lot of this can relate to the way permissions can happen in the system based on that membership type. And so the, what I'll be looking at is the Network for the National Library of Medicine system. And um, what we're looking at is a web form for them, a Drupal web form that's integrated with CVCRM. So web form CVCRM is the Drupal module that's being used. This is their membership signup form because it came up in chat. I also wanna point this out um, in order to minimize the creation of duplicates. 
they have their users with the ability to select um, the organization that they are associated with, um, and which is filtering a sublist of contacts within City CRM and permissions are controlled um, special for that. But just want to note this as one possibility because I know that duplicate management issue and when people type in things in different ways, um, the way that that can just create lots of duplicates. Like I'm seeing right here, there's a duplicate <laughs> that needs to be merged. And so there's a lot of kind of management still in the back end, like there's always going to be for managing contacts and duplicates, but this is a way for self-service for that to be selected. Okay, so let's go back up and look at the build for this. And we'll look at settings and we'll look at city CRM. So you can see how this is configured. So in this case, we have um, three contacts that are enabled. One is that individual, then the member. So for them, the primary member is the membership organization, but it's individuals. We all know that individuals log into websites um, and it's based on the relationship that they have with the primary member that can um, give them the access that they need. And then there can also be a parent organization that is sort of above the hierarchy of the, the member organization. So for this organization, the primary member is this organization, and there can be an additional relationship with another organization. But um, the Civi CRM settings for this membership type, the parent organization does not inherit the membership, only the individual employer, sorry, employee gets the membership. So if we look at membership types, what we set up for them is a membership type that's called under review. And the only purpose for this is to make it easy for them to see the membership type uh, or the new members that have come in that they need to review before they approve them. And so if we look in Civi CRM, I'm in the back end of their system, let's go to the dashboard. There. Wait for that to fully load and then we'll look at a specific example. So you can see that they have um, they have multiple membership types and one of those is called under review where they can see at any time the number and I'm in a, in a dev version of this website. So there's many more memberships than what you're actually seeing here. Um, and so the under review allows them to have this really simple process. So uh, memberships come in, the example of the Lewis Public Library, we see that there's one membership here. Contributions is still enabled in the system, even though it's not used um, because all their membership types are free. So we see when it came in, we see that the membership type is under renew. If I have reviewed this information, which for them is basically reviewing that all the information um, that this organization needed to provide has been provided. And if it's all accurate, then they can simply go to change this from a under review membership type to the NNL member, or maybe it's the NPHCO membership type or doc line. They simply just change the membership type and click save. So the reason we configured it this way, I love our error messages in, in dev sites. The reason we configured it that way is because if you're wanting to edit a membership type or wanting to edit more details about a membership, such as changing the membership status, then you have to override. You have to override it until a certain date, which is just a more confusing workflow. Um, and so it's really easy just to have a membership type really for the purpose of member management that makes for an easy process in the back end. Um, for people to just review information if you don't want those permissions to go automatically live. And you can do that in other ways too, based on your um, membership terms of how long does a new membership um, period last versus current. Do you have a grace period after your membership expires? Um, and then your CMS permissions could be based on that grace period where maybe they continue to get access to the member only area during that grace period or not. All of those are permissions and controls that can be built in the way your system is configured. But I wanted to show this because I think it is an incredibly simple use case and really easy management tool, um, especially when you have a sign up process that you don't want. Um, you really want to have a review period and a specific review period without um, any access. Um, I mean, they could still have a they could still have a user on the website, but that doesn't mean that they actually have access to things on the website because that's permission controlled and role based. 
So I wanted to point that out. And then next, let's look at checksums. So there's this great article here in the documentation, and I'll even link to it here. Let's throw that in the chat right now. Okay. And let's look at the use case. We'll go to my contact record and we'll send myself an email and then I'll pause my screen share here and I'll share it from um, a different browser where I'm not logged in. So I'm going to go to actions, I'm going to send an email. I have a little template set up, membership sign up prompt, sign up for your membership today. You can create templates by going to mailings, message templates. You can look at that if we have time and see it's populating. Hi, first name. Thanks for your interest in membership. We encourage you to sign up today. Let's look at that link. So we see that it's going to that, con that membership form, that contribution page that we've previously looked at. And there's this nice little bit here at the end, um, the checksum and the contact ID. You frankly don't even really need to know or understand how those work. What I even did for this is with this documentation for how the checksum for contribution pages work, I just pulled it from this. So this is the format of what the um, contribution page is, where the ID of that contribution page is at the end. And then you just copy this part and contact checksum token and CID equals the contact ID. So you can even just copy and paste from that, whether you're in Joomla, WordPress, you've got um, the how to send, send that out here. So back to here, we've seen the link. Now I'll click, I'll go ahead. And then just to step, step yeah. back for a second for regarding checksums, mm -hmm. um, is it just to send out the automated or send out emails or is it for it's to, to, to validate the contact, yeah, to, to kind of validate the contact and have um, kind of a sec security around it, basically. Um, it. Yeah, so if I send, if I send this email, I'm going to pause my screen share and then show you what that allows for your contacts that you're emailing. Sorry. Okay, there we go. Got my email. And now I will share my screen from Safari. Okay, so this is the email. Hi, Jenna, correctly knows my name. It uses the first name token. Um, noting that tokens do not work if the data is not present. So if you happen to have a contact that did not have a first name and you were using the first name token, then um, nothing would show up. It would just be a space and then the comma. So thank you for your interest and membership. We encourage you to sign up today. So when I click that link, I'm in a browser where I'm not signed up. Um, but you see, because of that, if we look at the URL, because of using those tokens and passing both from a security and a contact ID. So I'm contact ID nine. My CVCRM unique ID is nine. Because of that, it can auto-populate my information. This is just really valuable because you're minimizing duplicates and you're making it easier for um, individuals to take action and to sign up. They can just review their information. If their address has changed, they simply update it. Those updates would then um, immediately reflect within CiviCRM because it's pulling these fields directly from CiviCRM. So this is a nice way to um, kind of simplify your uh, workflow so people aren't having to log in. Another thing that you can see here is that because it knows who I am because of that ID, even though I'm not logged in the system, but because of those tokens, it's telling me about the memberships I have. So it's saying you have a current lifetime membership, which does not need to be renewed. And your annual frame membership expires on August 26th. Um, and so that's, that's handy too, that you didn't, this is all um, coming from stock-based city here and these kinds of communications that can show up on the form. And this setting here is also something that could be configured in the contribution page to have this um, disabled even if you don't want that. If I click this and what that does is basically clear out the form. I'm completing this on behalf of someone else. So there's no updates that would be reflected um, on my contact record since I cleared that out. What's the so, step that would happen right before that you send that email out? So would it be somebody filling out something on the website they're interested in membership or yeah, that's, that's how you get question. the data mm -hmm. that's a great question so there's all kinds of use cases for that maybe you are looking at all 
expired members in your system. You've done a search advanced search or memberships, find memberships, and you have created a group of all of your expired members. Or maybe it's your newsletter that you send out to all of your contacts, whether or not they're a member, they're just everybody who's opted in to receive general communications from you, and you want to encourage them to sign up. Um, as a member. Maybe they're already a member. If they click that link, then they'll see that message that you saw at the top of my screen that says, you're already a member of this type that expires on this date. Um, and if they're not a member, then it just automatically fills in the information that you have about them within um, whatever those fields are in the profile. And if we remember about profiles, um, then I'm you specify- I'm wondering if there's okay. a additional permi permission that you would need to add within Drupal in order for people to see that data or not when you're using the checksum. So, because it's it's populating the form with the data that's in CIVI. So I'm wondering if you have to enable some permission for that. It definitely or, um, does not or have- Or people who are not logged in. Yeah, I know that it does not require the like the view all contacts or or something like that. Um, that is often a permission that can be carefully given or considered related to the use case. Um, I was showing with the membership sign up form where they can kind of filter and look for contacts. I know that there were some things that we did for permissions there to make that possible. I don't remember the exact permission that list in, in Drupal is very okay. long. Of yeah, permissions. yeah, it's kind of complicated. Yeah. And this is such a great thing to test. Um, so, so what I did too, which makes this really easy is I created that message template, um, which then you could edit and test at any time. And you can add new message templates, which message templates can be used in so many different ways in the system and is just a really great way of saving language. So if you use the same similar language, or at least you want to start a lot of your communications with the same language, you can create message templates here. And then when you're in a contact record and you want to send an email, which then is also a great way for you to record and show um, conversations or requests or communications that you've sent to individual or, or groups of contacts, then by using message templates, it just speeds up that process. So that configuration of this message template, if I go back, I'm proud of myself for not getting too lost in my own tabs, um, was adding the token. I could add the last name token to last name, hi, first name, last name, and then sign up today. And then I had just highlighted that and added my hyperlink, which was, oh, look at it this way. Um, was pulled directly from this. And so there was nothing fancy that I did at all. I looked up what my contribution page was and copied that in, that URL, which if we go to live here. So my process for creating that link was copying this link into here. I'll even do it again. So there's my contribution page link. And then tokens, I'm in Drupal. So I copied this part of it because my ID, oh, and we need the ampersand to copy that part in, append that to the end. Oh, make sure there's no dangling space and click okay. And then click save. And then you have an email. So there's so many different use cases of when um, tokenized links can be really helpful. That's for contributions, for event signups. Um, there's, there's reading through this will tell you a lot about what they are, how they can be useful. And it's really all about um, minimizing how often you're wanting people to sign in. There's definitely the time and the place of when um, people should and need to sign into your system. Um, but there's also using these links can be a quick way for people to take action, um, updating their information, minimizing the potential that they're ever going to create a duplicate, and then submit accurate information into City CRM. I think that addresses the question that Sandra had um, in the chat. So if somebody changes their email address in that form, it automatically will update in CIVI. But mm -hmm. um, Sandra, feel free to add because. I think it sounds like what if somebody changes it on behalf of someone else and inadvertently changes someone else's record? Yes, we, we've had that previously ourselves where within when we send out we send out um, 
option for people to opt in to work various um, mailing lists and we send them with a checksum but people have occasionally changed without obviously there is a the bit at the top which is really useful that says register someone else but if they don't click that and they just continue assuming that they're registering it for someone else then that person's record has changed the person you've yep. sent to to the to the new email they've typed in because it's updated their record we've had that too And that could get to why everybody needs to sign in too. That could be, um, and we'll look at some in kind of part three, we'll look at some dashboard abilities for managing relationships, updating information um, and all of that. So I think there's some great questions there that we'll make sure to cover. I was going to see, to see if I could answer what it means when you sign up on behalf of an organization, but I don't, I'm not trusting myself to do that so quickly on the fly. What I was going to do is have my employer do a modification of my contribution page to make um, sign up on behalf of an organization. And the way that then the system can populate my relationships uh, because it knows my ID and it can know the organization that I have an employer employee relationship with. But I won't try to work through that use case. I'm happy to demo separately or follow up with specific use cases if folks wanna just reach out after, after the training. That sounds great. I, Cause we have about 15 minutes left. Um, so I think we'll, let's move on to the demo three part. Okay. And I just wanna add one note uh, before you start that demo is that for our memberships, when we when someone fills out an application, we also use CIVI rules to send out a specific message template that your application is being reviewed. I know mm -hmm. that there are automated messages that can be sent directly through CIVI, but we prefer to use message templates just to make it a little bit more personalized. We have photos of our, you know, our staff in that email uh, welcoming or just letting people know we're reviewing their application. And it also inserts the name of their organization. So I think it's helpful to use CB rules and message templates to send out automated notifications when someone fills out a membership application. That's a great point. That's a great point. So we already touched briefly on how to build out a sign-up form um, via Drupal Web Forms. There's great documentation about how to use Web Form integrated with Civi CRM. Lots of training videos. There's um, should have collected all of those links and put them into here. I'll try to do that after the training. Um, and then building a dashboard, what we do with a lot of our clients is use web forms heavily um, for that as well. And there's three modules in particular that I really like. One of them is the Civi member role sync, where that basically syncs the Drupal user based on what that membership, um, membership is in the system and also membership status. Um, the other is Drupal node view permissions, which just is more granular permissions on um, specific uh, statuses of a Drupal node or Drupal content. And the other, which is really valuable, is the Drupal menu item role access. And I'll show um, how we use that in one of our client systems, where instead of having to have multiple distinct menus for the different kinds of roles that you have, you can have one menu and then control the menu item based on what that um, Drupal user's role is. And so because of this, because of the city member role sync, that works really well with this. And so those, mem those roles are automatically being added or removed based on their membership type and status. Um, and then that automatically gives them permission to see menu items. So you can have a user dashboard that's very specific. So if we look at the example of, um, this is the US Chess Federation. This is their dashboard. This is a Drupal view. Um, and in this Drupal view, we have a bunch of links. And some of these links are just going to web forms. So this is the way that we, for most of our organizations, will set up um, how they can manage their information. You can see because it's a web form, you can lock fields. So for example, they never want um, their members changing their birth date or gender, those fields are locked. So it's displaying the information. If they're wanting to change that information then they contact and see update key information here. Otherwise they can just review through, update their information and click submit. So uh, because I'm logged into the system and it's not populating my ID or anything, this is the configuration settings of the web form itself. And so there's no way for me to somehow change the URL to then view and um, 
like pilfer, you know, take somebody else's data by changing the ID uh, because this is based on the permissions of the logged in user, which is me in the system. And so this is a way that completely distinct from membership, you can just allow people to manage their information, self-service, do it themselves in a nice clean way um, without, they don't need any permissions in Civi at all. And those are just nice links off of the user dashboard. Can you hide the log fields so they don't see the log fields at all? The log fields, say that again? The locked fields. They, yeah, they yeah. So, just yeah, we, yeah, we exactly. So we intentionally have them displayed based on this organization's requirements, um, but you wouldn't even have to include those fields. So if I look at the um, the build of this, we can see the settings, uh, what has been selected or not within Civi Serum. So if you've played with Drupal Web Forms integrated with Civi Serum at all, you know that you choose what the fields are that you want to have displayed. So there's many more player detail fields, for example, that I could select um, that I haven't selected because it's not relevant for this form, but you pick and choose what you want to have displayed. And then also with web forms, you decide the label of that field. Um, so for example, the email field could be relabeled to what is your email, but that doesn't change the label in City Serum. It's still email. Um, so changing the order, the way that they display on the page, all of that can be controlled with web forms. And you can have um, fields hidden too. If if you're wanting that. Um, an example with the with NNLM, the Network for the National Library of Medicine, they have some fields hidden and those are based on being able to automatically send um, emails to specific region contacts when a new member has signed up in a specific region. So it's the United States, so it's not like there's one contact for a new member. There's kind of seven contacts for new membership signup and management depending on what part of the country you live in. And that's where you can use um, email handlers within on the Drupal side with um, web forms to then automatically notify the right contact based on something about that membership. So it's not like it has to just go to one generic inbox and then that person having to forward. So there's a lot of potential there. Um, I wanted to quickly show the this, I'm just looking at one of those menus. So I referenced this link here, the Drupal menu item role access, this module and what that looks like in practice. Um, so we can see that there are many more menu options here than what I see on my, oh, not something different than what I see on my user page. And that's because of that module where if I look at this one, for example, this menu item down here, I can say menu item roles, who can see this? We have a few other ways that this can be targeted to um, the show, but who can see this item? and that that is defined per item. And that one's disabled, but yeah, you get my point. <laughs> I feel like I'm, I'm rushing now. Um, the final thing I wanted to show was the, um, the National Association of Addiction Treatment Providers and um, this the way that they have the ability to manage and disable users. So, um, like the Network for the National Library of Medicine, this organization, the primary members are also organizations. So organizations being the primary member, not um, the individuals, but it's the employees of those primary members that log into the system and need access. And so um, for them to easily scale without having to add a bunch of additional team members, then we were realizing they also needed the ability for people to say, hey, that person quit. They shouldn't have access to this website anymore. And so they can just see all their employees of Square in the system. And this is based on those permissions. Um, and noting here that edit main location and edit facilities, if there were any, this goes to a web form that's auto-populating information about, um, about my organization, which is Square. So if I look at disabling a user, we also used web forms for this. So user to disable is Adrian. After you disable this user, they will be removed as an employee of your organization. So this process does not um, delete that contact record. Um, all it does is put an end date on that relationship. So let's look at the, um, let's look at Civi CRM. You can see that this is a Drupal 7 site. So we see that the fields, user to disable, my organization, then we have a couple hidden fields where then the relationship to the organization, is that active? No, it's not active. And the end date is today. 
And if we look at Civi CRM, the way that's configured for user, we have employee of an end date. And so it's just a, it's, there's a lot of options within creative site building where this is like a, a no code solution um, for the way that's set up. And this is the Drupal view, which if you're familiar with Drupal views at all, this is how this information, I'll go back here a little bit. So this block right here of squares employees with member access, this is being created by this Drupal view. So we can see display name ones, employee with member access, just like squares employees with member access since that's obviously a different organization name. And then the text here that is specifying and linking to that web form that's automatically populating the IDs that we're pulling. So this gets into much more complexity, but with training, um, I, I believe everything is possible. I'm not a developer, <laughs> um, but I've learned a lot of things within the configuration um, in the seven years I've been been working with uh, specifically Drupal and Civi. So there's just a lot of, lot of potential. Um, and when you uh, scroll up on that form where you could mm -hmm. manage um, this one, for yeah, managing, exactly. like deleting. Okay. Exactly. When you scroll up, you have post job opportunities, share news and mm -hmm. updates. Are yep. all of those web forms? No. So some of these are content types um, that are open to public submission, um, which is another, that's more of like really getting into the land of Drupal. So I want to carefully not do that. Since but I know is we have it many related other to Civi at all? Like they so can, can be. See. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Yeah. I mean, this, this is just a bunch of menu items and menu items could link to anything, um, whether that's a, a contribution form, an event registration form. Um, like if you uh, click on um, submit a resource, mm -hmm. would you be able to go back into the back end and see what resources this person has submitted? Yep. Because they would be the author of that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that so would in be in Civi or just in Drupal? Um, well, that for this, this is configured in um, in Drupal, but that's where you also have activity types. So there's lots of ways that that could be configured. So maybe you have a custom activity type for resource, and then you could easily run a report out of Civi CRM of anybody who has a um, submitted a submitted resource, a and that resource. could be the activity type. And maybe you look at the last month or the last quarter that's um, great. based on those activity types being submitted. Yeah, no, that's really useful. Yeah. So all and of that can be tracked in Civi as well. It's just how each of these things is configured. And I know we're almost out of time, but there was a few questions related to, let's see, the, the member role sync. If anyone else wants to jump in, and I know, Kathy, you had posted something in here as well. We have just five minutes for any last questions. And Jenna, if you want to take a look and see in yeah, the comments, it's a bit. Um, but I think all of these resources are super helpful. The, the plugins that you shared in the notes, so we can all go back and look at this in more detail. And if you could share your contact information in the notes as well, Jenna, and then people yeah. can um, follow up with you afterwards with specific questions. But there's looks like there's so much we can do. We're just like scratching the surface of what we can. Yeah. And I really felt like I was racing and I do encourage folks because I'm, I'm very aware that so much of that was obviously um, very Drupal specific. And so please do add other resources and extensions or tools that you've used um, knowing that it's not like everybody is on Drupal or should be. <laughs> And um, I added my contact info at the top of the document, and I'm also going to throw it in chat here. Great. Um, there's a question regarding Twilio. I think Norm will do a separate, a separate Civi CRM campfire chat on SMS um, and Civi. So we can kind of dive more into Twilio and other tools as well. Uh, but, but Jenna, I really want to thank you so much for your demo today. And thank you everyone for joining today. Um, and hope to see you all soon 
at the next uh, campfire chat. I'm just going to stop the recording now. <laughs>